Admiral's log. We emerged victorious against the German fleet. The battle was fierce and there were casualties on both sides. As I stand among the debris of the battle, I cannot help but feel a mix of triumph and sadness. I am proud of my sailors and officers for their skill and bravery. They fought with honor and determination, and they emerged victorious against a formidable enemy. However, I also mourn the loss of those who gave their lives for our country. As I consider our next moves, I am filled with a sense of responsibility. We have dealt a significant blow to the German Navy, but I know that they will not be defeated easily. We must be vigilant and continue to prepare for further engagements. I will also be reviewing our strategies and tactics, looking for ways to improve and avoid unnecessary losses in the future. I'll be in communications with our allies to coordinate our efforts and plan a more efficient strategy to end the war. I also want to ensure the welfare of the families of the fallen soldiers and officers. They made the ultimate sacrifice for our country, and it is our duty to take care of their loved ones. I know that the road ahead will be long and difficult, but I'm determined to see it through to the end. We've made a good start, but there's still much work to be done. Together, we will emerge victorious. Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to the third episode of the Japan 1910 series. Um, something has happened in Europe. Well, not strictly in Europe alone. The German Empire seems to be taking on the whole world. They have not only commenced a war with me, which you've seen in the previous two episodes, they've also gone towards the British, the French. Now, the Russians were also part of the original deal, but the Spanish and the Chinese are new. These two, I'm not sure why they ticked them off, but the Spanish and the Chinese are both going after the Germans. So, apparently the Germans are fair game for everybody now, except for Italy and Austria-Hungary. Now, Italy is very, very, very close to being allied with Germany, but not there yet. So, right now, I think Germany, considering all its enemies, is extremely busy. And it's going to make it quite easy to get rid of a bunch of their ships. First, though, I'm going to have to defend some of my own. Over here, we have the light cruisers Medusa Gazelle and the destroyer V4 coming in, and I have 11 transports to defend. So the light cruiser Jinsu, Kinu, and Maki are going to have to go after these guys. They are fortunately part of the convoy, and as such, they don't have to race there and fight. But still, um, we are fairly evenly matched, and I'm not that confident in the abilities of my ships. So let's see, they're to the northwest. We're going to take the Kinu, the Jinsu, and the Maki over there. Maki's going to be able to race ahead, so let's do that. She's substantially faster at 32 knots relative to the 24 knots that the Kinu and the Jinsu can do. Torpedo is not allowed unless otherwise directed. And let's go find the enemy. My transports fortunately have decided wisely to turn tail and run, because this is not a good spot for a convoy. They're over there. Okay. Farther west than northwest. Here we go. Contact has been made. We have a couple of lights in the DD as of yet unaccounted for. Uh, let's send torpedoes. Why not? These guys are pretty nicely aligned. We might be able to send some gift packages their way. Which will allow for perhaps the destruction, if not is threatening of one of their cruisers. Uh, I wonder how quickly it's going to be... There we go. Oh, they spotted the light cruiser. They haven't actually spotted the torpedoes yet. Oh, but they're already changing direction. See, with this stuff, I never quite know if it's down to the AI's ability to have some sort of precognition and go, Oh, torps in the water. Or if it's just so that the cruiser already happened to be changing direction. So now it has detected the torpedoes. But that, that took it a while. Speaking of my torps... No. Unless something goes dramatically wrong, I think the light cruiser is safe. I also happen to know that their light cruisers are quite potent when it comes to torpedoes. So let's split up. And let's make sure that they're going to have a fairly hard time getting both of our cruisers in the line of fire in one go. Don't avoid any obstacles. The Maki, you're now a gunboat, so let's start acting as one. 
There is a torp, but it didn't go off. Well, it effectively kind of went off. Let's defend the convoy in the most aggressive way by sinking the invaders. Sinking the attackers. The Kino has a trained crew. Can't speak to the crew of the Germans yet. My accuracy is slightly better and range is negligible. Sea state? Not doing me any favors with the cloudy weather in the evening situation. Well, 1.4 out. I don't have any bow tubes, do I? Just the port and the starboard ones. Same cannot be said for Medusa. He has bow stern, port starboard. Dangerous adversary. Ooh, that was good. Now she has a lot of torpedo tubes less. It's interesting how this goes, because the moment that one of those tripping tubes gets hit, they all die. I think that's a bit much. I think that needs to get turned down, because right now it's... I don't know, you're just doing way too much damage. Relative to the amount of uh, shell fire they're actually putting down target. I mean, I hit one torpedo launcher and the game just went boom. You just lost all your torpedo tubes. Torpedo detonation. Apparently that detonated all the stores on the ship. All right, we've got a destroyer drifting in here. Where are you going, you little minion? we got three torpedo launchers on this guy. So they are not to be taken lightly. Because... Yep, there it is. There it is. Turn. Oh, conning tower damaged. Really good. Really good. Fire control damaged. Flooding. Are you sure you want to get to within 200 meters of a light cruiser? I mean, you can try, but... It's probably going to be a one-time exercise. Also, you don't have any further torpedoes, so I can basically run you down. Without any concern. Switch to the gazelle, please. Blocked? Really? Which armor you got? Wow! All of it. Okay, that's a really heavily armored light crew uh, DD. That explains a lot. Switch fire to the DD and switch fire to high explosive. Because this is definitely going to get bounced, but HE will not. HE, oh. Is that a torpedo? I saw something there. Gazelle is nicely on fire. Um, is there any particular reason you're not shooting this target up? Oh, they don't seem to have the same issue. Uh, all back emergency. Drops away. Ah, oh, we'll be fine. You, however, will not. Oh, it's a dud. Okay, fine. Fine. Uh, smoke up this destroyer. No, thank you. Have the Kinu come in. Come on. Between the two of you, you're two light crews against the DD. What's the, what's the trouble? You shouldn't have that many difficulties dealing with one destroyer. Your accuracy is only 3%, though. Biggest debuff is target maneuvering. Right. Medusa doesn't have torps anymore, but the gazelle still does. Gotta keep an eye on her. And the starboard launcher. Nope. Hold. DD's maneuvering again. And again. Come on. Cut her off. Isolate this destroyer from the rest of the fleet. Launch torpedo if you can. Point blank range. Drop away. Boom. Barely any damage, 148? That was it? Oh, it's an 18 inch torpedo. I'm expecting something a bit bigger. A bit more damage than that. Oh, lovely. 
Okay, that destroyed the torpedo launcher. Now they just have one left. Medusa is not as fast as I am. I can exploit that. Let's see, this is your starboard launcher. Your starboard launcher is ready. Let's chase down the Medusa. The V4 should be slowing down substantially now that she's so badly flooded. And she has an engine out. Stern launcher, I think. No, starboard launcher against the Medusa. Medusa dodged. Very good. Just have to execute another attack. DD, please come back here. These are such close ranges. I mean, when you're playing 1930, 1940, you're fighting 15,000 meter range, generally. I tend to go a little closer because otherwise it'd just be boring. But this is 800 meters. If they launch a torpedo, it's on you in a second. Nope. Hold off on the torpedo launch. I'm kind of going to pull alongside the Medusa and just dump a torpedo into her. Um, you don't have a bow tube. You do have a starboard tube. Let's see if the starboard tube can hit and pen the gazelle. Go for it. Torp on. This thing is almost gone. It's taking 5,600 5, damage? That's a lot. Oh crap, the other torp is unavailable. Oh great. Oh, yours aren't. Yeah, that did a lot of damage. Where the hell did my torpedo go? Oh, never mind, it wasn't ready yet. So, substantial damage to the Jinsu. Not that those bulkheads are going to be enough to save the ship. Oh, now you're launching a torpedo. Yeah, that's a little late, because at this point they're definitely going to notice and do something about it. Torpedo is not that likely to do anything useful. Okay. More gun power it is. Come on. Sink already. 3% buoyancy. There you go. Gone. Hold off. Just isolate one cruiser. Just focus on the Medusa. Maybe burn her down. That'd be progress. Yes, that was your port launcher, yeah. Okay. Uh, turn as much as you can. So we can bring the starboard launcher onto the target. Just getting parcels. Really, I kind of can't pen this thing. Just, just now I can. I've got to be really close to it, and it has to be flat on. Otherwise, I cannot do anything. Don't torque. We don't have many left. Kinu still has plenty of torpedoes. She's gonna have to be the one that deals the damage to the Medusa. There's the Maki again. Follow along. Okay to the Medusa. Really short range, 300 meters. Torps are not fast. Well, 42 knots. Could be worse. Torpedo away. Dud. Fuck's sake, dude. Auto select. With these live cruisers, I'm really not sure who's gonna win this. This can very much go either way. Because they cannot pen me. Well, I'd say they can pen me a lot better than I can pen them. Medusa has some fire issues. Want your last torpedo with the gazelle, please? Starboard launcher away. No torpedoes left. Boom. That hurt. 1200 damage. Very good. That's progress. But that means I'm fresh out of torpedoes. Okay. Uh, bring armor piercing. No, never mind. Still can't pan that. Oh, don't ram me. Don't ram me. This is going to get awful close. Look at that. 
awful, awful close. Some distance there, friend. Got two damaged engines on Jin, so it's not ooh, gonna help very much with my ability to keep the ship afloat. Oh, I can pen the deck. Never mind. Hmm. The DD at. Crew losses then, 13%, 6.5%. That's not going to do it either. Flooding is going to be tricky. If at all possible. Come on. Well, once again, your starboard launcher is busy. Oh, we destroyed a main gun. That's progress. But, oh, it doesn't matter. Their main gun's 4.7 and their secondaries essentially are 2. The older guns are 4.7s and some stuff is smaller, but colliding is definitely not going to do them any favors. They're both pretty badly burning. Torpedoes away. And now the AI suddenly manages to unfuck themselves, but not enough. There we go. That's flooding on four compartments. Yeah, that's going to cause all sorts of issues. We're down to 42% buoyancy, 41. 37. I'd love to help them along, but... I don't have a torpedo left on the starboard side. 38, 37. They're kind of controlling the flooding now. Everything's getting blocked. Everybody fire HE. Just gonna have to set so many fires that the damage control port is gonna get overwhelmed. And it looks like the situation with the Medusa is getting there. He's badly, badly burning. And the part is still flooded. Twenty point seven percent losses. We're gonna have to ramp up those numbers if we wanna do actual Useful stuff with that. Hmm. Keep turning. I keep burning the Medusa down because she's fixing her flooding. Oh, come on. Oh, half my guns have been destroyed. Yeah, that's not helpful. And the five incher is only on the bow. Keep forgetting that with these cruisers. It's not my best work. Ooh. Cruisers. Stop. That's gonna hurt. Ow. 1800. How do your torpedoes hurt that much? You also got an 18 incher. But. You got a double hole bottom. Is that it? No. Okay, so just the impact angle. This is bad. Kino just launched her last torpedo, and at this rate, I'm not even sure if she's going to survive. The Medusa got hit for 2,000. Could be going under. Yeah, she's gone. Okay, that was a good torp. Let's see if I can pull the Kino out of this fight and finish it with a Jinsu, but it's, uh, it's iffy. Get the DD in here. They've only lost 19% of their crew so far. And they still have torpedoes. I've got to be really careful with that. Colliding with their own ship doesn't do any damage. The amount of fires, though, is looking really good. Jinsu and her starboard side. Yep, extensive fire. Job is done. So, that's two light cruisers and a DD dead. They damaged, definitely damaged my ships, but not enough to sink them. So I still have my ships. It's going to cost me some time to repair. But I did gain 3,000 victory points out of that. And the German Empire lost three more ships. Progress. Unfortunately, that doesn't cause issues for my shipbuilding capacity just yet. I still got a 27,000, sorry, 25,000 margin. What is potentially more interesting is that over here my fleet has arrived and between all of these guys I do have enough to 
to commence a naval invasion. It's not quite as many ships as I'd hoped. Um, we're going to reinforce them. We're going to probably need more, because I do expect a bunch of Germans to start showing up. But either way, we can start launching a naval invasion. So, I want to choose... Um, hold on. Am I going for... I can't cancel that? Whatever. German New Guinea. We have a naval presence, over 100,000 tons of warships. Should we commence? Yes. Uh, yeah, I picked the right one. German New Guinea. Okay, this is going to be interesting. This is the first time I'm actually trying one of these on a live campaign. The other one was in the patch video. So I'm not sure how well this is going to go. And I am fairly sure that the Germans are not going to take this one lying down because they got a battleship there. A heavy cruiser there, but more importantly, two battleships and two battlecruisers over here in the Yellow Sea. And this is not exactly a location where I would want them. Because it means that they could be sending more ships. Now, I still have my battleships and my battle cruiser are sitting over there. I just don't believe that there is much more that I can currently send out. Because almost all of my ships are currently busy. Or undergoing repairs of some sort. Still have some ships here. Let's push these to this site and see if I can actually muster a fleet sizable enough. Mm. Yeah, we're just gonna have to take another couple of turns and see what happens. So the naval invasion has been launched, and I now have to get 16,607 tons into this area. Shouldn't be too hard. The fleet is just outside of it, so I had to move it a touch. And if I'm reading this right, it's going to take three turns. So three months if this is going to go my way. This is because I'm not bringing in a ton of troops, most likely, or I don't need a ton of troops. And because of that, you don't need a ton of uh, ships to actually be inside of this area. If at some point you're going to invade bigger areas, you're probably going to have to also bring more tonnage, as I've seen in the patch notes video. Now, what I found interesting is that Germany um, is at war with China. And that means that they're going to do an attack with the army, which is stationed somewhere in... Yeah, here, in uh, Kiachau Bay. They got 92,000 guys, and they're sending them into China, which has 812,000 guys. So I'm not sure how well this is going to go for them, but I have my suspicions. For now, we're going to keep the guys of my fleet inside the naval invasion circle, and mostly focus on getting the fleet back up to full strength. I can now start working on one of my new battleships again. And ideally, I would get those guys... Well, I got them all the attention that they need. It's going to take a while. Uh, in construction. Construction? Where are my construction ships? This one's all... Oh, this is also going to free up even more capacity. That's really good. Come on. Let's just go to status. Here we go. Building. Nagitsu. 12 months out. Let's proceed. This is going to cost... What was it? 50,000? 30,000 tons. All right. So this one's... Oh, sorry. This one's still building. Um, I can continue building this one. That's going to come out of production next month. That's going to come out of production 10 months. I can... Com yeah, I can continue construction on the new battle cruisers. It's going to cost me some money, but that's fine. How much do I have now? 46. So, seeing as that ship is less than 46,000 tons, this should be fine. Which one was suspended? Battlecruiser, here. Resume. So now we're building everything. It's just going to take a lot of time. In 12 months, though, I will have new battleships. This year, I have already designed a ship. Uh, that was the Senyo class of battlecruisers. I'm not allowed to design more than one ship class per year to make it a bit more of a challenge. So, let's move on to the next couple of months and see what happens with the naval invasion. Germany apparently wasn't at war with enough players yet, so the United States has joined the war against Germany. 
So this is yet another power that is up for grabs, or that's going to be joining this war. Uh, that means that the enemy of my enemy is now a little bit closer to being my friend, so the Empire of Japan and United States relationships improve. Over here we have a bit of a problem. I'm defending against a task force. I'm not sure why I have this composition, because I have a couple of battleships parked right there. The enemy has brought battleships nice and now, sorry, battleship nice and now, uh, the Hindenburg, two light cruisers, and two DDs. Now, it's not impossible for me to take this fight and win, but it is going to be really difficult. So let's try and withdraw, and that doesn't work, so we're going to have to fight our way out of this one. Alright, so this battle. My assets are three heavy cruisers, two lights, and two DDs. My plan is to try and get everybody into torpedo range against these targets. Seeing as any combatant basically doesn't have range, doesn't have accuracy at range, I'm going to be able to get the cruisers in to close range without taking a ton of damage. It's just their speed that's concerning, because they can only do 20 knots, which is not very quick. The lights can do 24 and the DDs can do 32. So the DDs best... Well, they kind of have the best chance of getting in there. But it does beg the question when. Because if I push them in too soon, they're just going to get taken out by the battleships too early. Firing armor piercing at this thing is vastly over-optimistic. Now, it seems that the battleship has already taken damage. Holy mother, you got a lot of guns. 12 11 inches. In a worst case situation, they can fire 10 of those. Sorry, they, they got 12 and another 4. So, yeah, we can fire a whole broadside of that. Secondary armament is 7 and a half and smaller. It's not as deadly. So, let's see if we can root out the smaller stuff first and potentially set some fires on the warship there, the uh, battleship. If that's going to be successful, then great. Because then the DDs that I have over here can push right for the battleship. Any damage I take is going to be unfortunate, but hopefully able to get mitigated. CLs. You're also going to have to make your way to the... Oh, the other guy also got damaged. I think everybody got damaged in this group. At this point, it's not surprising because the Germans are fighting the whole world. Uh, barring Italy and uh, Austria-Hungary. So, it's likely that these guys have already encountered a Chinese battle group or a British battle group before entering my space. And because of that, they already got roughed up some. Now, let's see if these Japanese ships can make a name for themselves. The CLs are the prime target. Interesting. This is a light cruiser. It's going to be one of those light cruiser, light cruiser fights. Not ideal. This lag is also not ideal. Range? 3 4. They could be torping me. I do believe that they have that range. Yeah, they got a range of 4. The battleship is leaving. Interesting choice. Over there, we got the destroyer. Alright, um, I don't want to be micromanaging too many things at once. It's going to be... Oh, never mind. The torpedo went off prematurely. It's your battle cruiser, huh? Two 12-inch guns. No. Make that eight 12-inch guns and a bunch of 1.7s and 7.5s. And this might be a bigger threat than their battleship. The Emden. Somewhat damaged, but definitely combat capable. Now, as for my DDs, if I can just push them right into the battleship now, because now their light cruisers aren't escorting them, and it's just two DDs in my way, which I can kind of outrun. So I might have an opportunity here to deal some damage. As for torpedoes, we got starboard, port, and... How many we got? Yeah, port, starboard, and aft. It's a bit of an uncomfortable setup, but it will work nice. 
Uh, don't fire HE, fire AP. Switch direction. CLs. Focus on this guy. I think the Hindenburg could blow a couple of really big holes in this ship. No, it can't. Oh, because these guys are really heavily armored. But the Nizer now is at a better angle. And has some slightly smaller guns. Yeah, they definitely have a better chance. But they're going for the worst angle target, which is the Miyoko. Bad choice. Don't get hit. It is. Right for the target, please. Eight kilometers out. Torpedo in the water. Target. Surugi. Okay, turn. Whatever happens, I need to take out this battleship. Because that's going to be a lot of victory points. This guy is not torping me yet. Notably the light cruisers. That should be fine. You guys are firing HE. Very good. How fast is this guy? 21 knots. He's faster than my heavy cruisers are. And the battle cruiser most likely is too. Yeah, 29 knots. So catching these ships is going to be tricky. Oh, looks like we draw some attention to the destroyers at this stage. Whoa. Loads of it actually. No, you moron. Avoid torpedoes. Turns right into it. What sort of half-wit captain is that? Come on. Interestingly, destroyers generally don't care about getting hit by torpedoes. Not sure why. Go. Pull on a flank. Smoke yourself up. Now hard starboard. Because now we need to avoid the other salvo. You're going to be a little bit hurting for speed, but shouldn't be too bad. Oh. Crap, that ruined my engines. No! Doing quite well, and I'm going to get hit by two. Boom, boom. Three, even. Well, that's not a very for my ship. Uh, range, 1-4. Prepare a torpedo salvo. I.e. one torpedo <laughs> against the Nizer now. Double hull, standard bulkheads, double hull bottom. Uh, many bulkheads. Yes, lovely. Torpedoes, save against Nizer now. Nizer now can turn not very quickly. Okay, opportunity. We're going to dismantle this division. I need to start managing the ships one by one by one. You will not be allowed to launch torpedoes. Fuck. Oh, that's one light cruiser dead, but um, mine is two. Okay, torpedo away. That torpedo decided to do something else, because I didn't launch it that poorly. I refuse to believe that. Can we pen this? Not really. <laughs> Definitely not. Not with a 28 inch armor belt. No. That's gonna be really difficult. We still got our limping DDs here. Which are doing remarkably well considering that the damage they've taken. You took what? Three torps? Still doing okay. Even a lot worse. Torp the Nizen now. Point blank range. Emden's already lost her torpedo tube, so that's one cruiser less to worry about, and the other one's dead. Alright. Send your package. Starboard side. Do so now. Emden's dead. Excellent. Come on. Come on, now is good. Yep, torpedo away. Oh! Shooting back with torpedoes. It's not at me. We're launching against the Rugi. Hit. For a whole 70 points of damage. That is... Underwhelming. It's gonna kind of make me reconsider the whole torpedo... Oof. 1200 damage. The whole torpedo plan. Because at this rate, we will not be able to deal enough damage to these guys. And if this is gonna be... 
how the whole battle is going to go, then we're definitely not, or the, the whole campaign, we're definitely not going to be able to get any torpedoes to deal a lot of damage. I've seen ships shrug off 24-inch torpedoes. They're not as good as they used to be. Oh, dude. At least launch back. Thank you. Ow. Time for the HE trick. Did that hit him? Yeah, it hit for 400 damage. That's better. Everybody HE on the Nizer now. Because the Nizer now seems a little busy. And if we can make it worse, oof, then we might be able to get a kill there. Uh, you're n yeah, you're kind of the only one who can actually catch the battle cruiser. How hell he protect is this guy? Standard bulkheads. Anti-torp 3? Jesus. Why are these guys also heavily protected? They've only lost 6% of their crew. Spacious quarters. Yeah, just keep overwhelming their damage control. Pretty much the only play I have at the moment. Push in with the Notori. The other one's still alive? Huh. Could have been worse. Smoke. Cute. Why is it now? It's really badly burning now. It's taking a lot of damage from those fires. He's also taking damage to our torpedo launchers, which is also progress. Come on. This thing is worth 47 million. Your guys are worth 14 million. So even if I lose all cruisers and sink the battleship, I still come out ahead. Eisenhower is also flooding. Still. That's surprising. Ooh. Wow. Lots of partial pens. How can you not kill this? You can, kind of. Okay, torpedo against the Nizer now. Port side. Range is about a kilometer. Let's add some more misery. Oh, another torpedo away from Tsurugi. I gotta be careful with the Notori now. That means the Nizer now is responding to the torpedo launch there. And that means that the Notori torpedo might actually have an easier time connecting. Also, I suspect that the ship is listing so badly that most of her main guns are unable to do anything useful. That'll hit. Come on. Good lord, these things launch slowly. Oh, that was beautiful. Ammo detonation. That's half your ship gone. Nice, and now it's gonna have a really bad time. There's another torpedo. Finally, Notori decides to do something useful with her life. And... If I can hit her in the stern, we're going to add more flooding. Boom. More flooding. In the meanwhile, the DDs have closed the distance against the battlecruiser. The battlecruiser is not particularly excited about the promise of getting hit by a couple of DDs. We're down to 14% buoyancy on the battleship. You need to survive. You need to just... Plow on. Save your torpedoes. Save your torps. Turn. This is the most dangerous part of the operation. She did. <laughs> yeah. And that's what was the most dangerous part. You're down to 4% buoyancy. I think it's time to abandon ship there. Nice now. Let's go. 3%, 4%. Is my starboard launcher ready by any chance? Because I want to have that thing locked onto the battle cruiser. Turn to port. Here's the Miyoko. Don't launch. Don't launch. This thing. Finally, a German ship that doesn't carry torpedoes. Oh, they're down to 0.5? I think they're dead. Dead. Nice and I was dead. Excellent. Okay, now we can focus on the battle cruiser. 
Um, I'm just going to collide with it. That's fine. I don't mind throwing away a heavy cruiser if it's going to mean killing a battle cruiser. Launching a torpedo, though, would be nice. But this is going to cause all sorts of other issues for them. This is a way to get rid of a ship. is also going to have a lot of issues after this one. But, as unfortunate as it is for the Hindenburg, I can keep doing this. They cannot. I have more ships. Oh, you moron. Now you launch a torpedo and you're going blank? Good lord. I need to talk about your tactics. Your launcher... Starboard launcher is available. Let's close the distance against the Hindenburg and see if we can deal some damage there. Because her stern is nicely flooded, her bow can still use some work. As for the Yonen and the Miyoko, try not to hit you friendly. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if we're also dealing damage to our own ship. No, not as of yet. Dealing a lot of damage with these guns, and you're just firing HE? We can pen them, though. We got 11 inch guns on these cruisers. These things are no joke. Let's use them. Yeah, I think Hindenburg is kind of running out of ideas here. She cannot run. I don't think she can shoot very well because of the angle. So. Hindenburg only really is sitting there waiting to die. Come on, starboard launcher. Turn into position. Good lord, man. Any day of the week now. Maybe? There we go. Heavy flooding. So. We've done it. The only survivor is a destroyer. And it's somewhere out there. It doesn't have the range to be able to fight at very long ranges, so it's got to be four kilometers or less. So let's mop up the DD and start counting some points. Some dancing around torpedoes later, I was able to sink all of the enemy ships. But I did lose the Yonen in the event that she rammed into the Nizanel as I wasn't paying attention because I was too busy dodging torpedoes. At any rate, that's 18,000 victory points for me and 3,700 for the Germans. More importantly, it takes a battlecruiser and a battleship off of the fleet in the Pacific. And that means that my naval invasion is much, much more likely to actually go through. Because my fleet over there will not get challenged. Also, if I'm able to complete the naval invasion and Germany then decides that they really want peace and I say yes then I won't have to try and go and uh, take this province by negotiation with them. Denmark and Russia, okay. Now oh, Estonia is uh, trying to take back their own empire, or their own uh, area. I've lost 860 soldiers and the Germans lost 312. <laughs> that ain't great. Um, we do have 175,000 tons needed of, uh, of 16k. In about two turns we should be fine. We should be able to complete this thing fairly easily. And that means that the population of the army force here should be dwindling quickly. And this little island is going to be mine. Probably won't happen this episode though, because I am going to call it here. Hope you guys enjoyed the battles. Some smaller encounters, not battleship material this time around, but interesting nonetheless. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you soon for the next one.